just starting backfill on the front of the garage here. We got our gravel burrito. We had some leftover river rock, so we're going to use that up. And uh, we get to dump our first couple loads of dirt. After a brief break. We got our filter fabric down inside the garage today. Hopefully tomorrow we can have some gravel shot in so we can roll that over. And then we're ready for sand compaction. I didn't get started on the inside really other than to get the tools over there. So that'll hopefully be a tomorrow project. Michael got the back porch block set today. We have three more courses to go and the front porch is done after friends and family came to help. Uh, so making good progress. We are getting ready to have sand shot into the house part of our home today. Well, tomorrow. We prepped all the filter fabric. Everybody's strategically moving out of the shot. <laughs> Michael had a load shot in today. Uh, managed to get the tractor in here and then has been um, spreading it out with the box blade and the plate compacting, but we'll probably have the rest shot in. Uh, but it's working pretty well so far. So we set the string lines using the rotary laser and then attached some of the just junk wood we had from the footer forms to the ICF walls using the just the plastic studs uh, to secure those and then ran our string using the rotary laser to make sure it was uh, level to set grade. And then we have a screeder board over there that we're running back and forth and using the uh, top of the board making sure it just barely brushes the underside of that string to make sure that it's uh, level. We found out we didn't quite have enough material in here, so Michael's moving some from the garage uh, while we're waiting to get a truck in here. So hopefully we'll at least have the house pad done today. And then once our trucking company can drop off another load in the garage, we'll get that sorted as well. And then I am currently finishing up, putting in the filter fabric under the porch and getting all of that cleared out so that we can fill the front and back porches uh, with sand as well, and then get our mortar uh, in the CMUs here in the front. So then we can have everything poured at once when um, we're ready to. Plumber comes hopefully next week. We've had a lot of rain lately. Uh, as you can see, we're kind of growing a jungle over here. Uh, but yeah, with any luck, we'll have this piece at least done today. We got the sewer line in on Friday. Ted and I spent all Friday night digging. It's got a tracer wire in it. Threaded in that bird's eye sand that we use for the rest of the house. So hopefully we'll be able to cover this up by the end of the day. Here's a chunk of that SDR26 pipe that we cut out of the existing sewer stub. Down here we have the two fittings we ended up using. We only needed a um, Street 22 and a half and a double uh, female end 22 and a half. They go together really easy with a little bit of that the pipe lubricant. But you can see how, how smooth that uh, transition worked out. Let's get this pipe out of here. Uh, when you're cutting off a fresh end of an SDR 26 pipe, you need to bevel it. That's why I've got all this dust up here because I was beveling the end with a uh, flat disc on an angle grinder. So we've got our slope, quarter inch per foot, <laughs> through the jungle here. We had a local contractor come in to do the rest of the house plumbing. And uh, we've got a double clean out here. And they gotta get over to this 
sewer pipe. Got it taped off because it smells disgusting. But here's a look inside at the uh, gasketed seal on these pipes. Inside the house here we have a stub for our vanity. And most of the sewer is actually in the center of the house. But here's the toilet for the guest bathroom, the main bathroom, and for the master bedroom vanity. It's kind of interesting they do like two layers of pipe. And so you can see this is all like on the upper layer and then it connects all the way back here and dives down to the main stack down there. Not really stack, just the horizontal branch. We have the laundry room with a nice drain here. And here's the main fence stack for the house. It's also going to feed the washer box. And then over here we have a, uh, a vent for a utility sink. Same thing where it's kind of at an upper level and then makes it down to the center. It dives down. There's the main horizontal branch there. Utility room. And it feeds the bathroom. Bigger floor drain. And then here's the crazy looking island vent. So we got a waste stack for the uh, kitchen sink and dishwasher. And then we have a vent and there'll be a like kind of a U-shape connecting these two. Uh, once we actually get the sink in, it's at the level. And here's how the vent actually returns. And then they didn't forget the uh, the garage slop sink that's buried under the sand there. A lot of digging. That's pretty much it. Today I think they could get the water lines in. We're going to a baseball game. So probably have to see it when we get back. So the plumber just wrapped up and uh, we're going through and double checking to make sure they have hot and cold water and drains where they need to be on our plumbing plan. Uh, so just kind of going around to make sure that they have drains where they need to be. So that'll be our utility sink uh, by the back door, with hot and cold water and then the drain running to it. And then coming in through the, from the garage into the house. This line will be for um, the refrigerator, the water, and ice that'll come out of that because the fridge will be in uh, whoa, wind. Uh, this corner here where my thumb is. And then the island, we'll have the dishwasher right next to the sink, but uh, that'll drain into the sink. And so you'll have the hot and cold water there. And there's a, a U um, under the ground there that they buried. Over here is the utility room. So where everything will ultimately connect as our, um, for our electrical and uh, the island vent in there as well. Glad that we labeled all these with Sharpie. Uh, we have our radon mitigation coming up through uh, the utility room. Uh, floor drain in there. And then there's a half bath on the other side of the utility room wall. So that is... Uh, right in here. So that's for the lavatory as well as the toilet. And over here we have our laundry room. So the floor drain with the hot and cold water for the uh, washer and dryer that'll be side by side. And then there's also going to be a um, like laundry sink or slop sink on the far right there. So washer, dryer, slop sink kind of like right in there. Uh, on the back porch and front porch, we have cold water for um, outside spigots to run a hose. So you can kind of see both of those on the corners there, the porches. 
and then over here we have um, a wet wall with two tubs and a couple of toilets on it. So the drains, the hot, the cold water, everything that's going to run through there. Um, over there in the back, that's for the other vanity. Uh, so that's this section right here on the drawing. Um, and then the other vanity is over here in the corner. Uh, so yeah, they were really fast, got in and out in three days. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, get the sand leveled and compacted over the weekend and get the garage leveled and compacted as well. And then we can start laying down foam and getting our radiant heat figured out. Today we finished up all of our radiant heating tubing. We thought we needed 2,000 feet. Michael bought 3,000 feet and we ended up needing 3,000 feet. <laughs> uh, so we marked out where to avoid all of the cabinets and vanities, all the important stuff. How does it feel to have toasty warm floors? Right now, pretty hot. Yeah, right now it's really too hot. And then we have our 90 coming in on Tuesday to organize this a little bit more, so a couple days from now. And then uh, we'll cut those all off and tape them prior to concrete pour. And then our trucking guys came to fill in the porch, so we need to screed that and form it up. Uh, hopefully they can pour the front and back porch at the same time. <laughs> 